Mirko Zardini, who is an architect and also director of the Canadian Center for Architecture since 2005, where he has curated many, many shows. He's also the co-curator, actually, um, of our uh, Cedric Price archive presentation. Here, please give a very, very warm welcome to Mirko Zardini. Thank you. So? Great, Mirko. It would be wonderful if you can tell us a little bit more about the archive, you know, uh, you gave a wonderful speech the other day to the students uh, of the ETH, which, you know, had a big impact on what's happening here. And it would be great to maybe start there and you telling us a little bit about the choice from the archive and uh, your view on Cedric. Okay. One of the big advantages uh, of my position is that uh, um, I, I have my meetings in a room in which there is a Seri Price uh, drawings and it is a, a sketch uh, of that uh, same room, void, uh, with um, a glass of water on the table. And uh, the comment there is underlined the idea of water because in reality I think the Seri Price uh, was expecting something else, uh, more alcoholic instead of water in waiting for this meeting. But the other, uh, so Cedric was a lot of time at CCA at the end of the 90s and was there for two reasons. One, for the archive that uh, came uh, in those years in different installments to CCA and uh, for a small exhibition that he did at CCA. And uh, the archive, uh, that uh, is uh, in the vaults, in the storage of CCA, in, together with other archives uh, and the other collection of CCA, is quite consistent. It's about uh, uh, 20,000 drawings, uh, 5,000 photographs. Uh, the books annotated by Sari Price uh, that were in his uh, library, in his uh, office in, uh, in London. Um, the uh, letters, the correspondence, uh, but also all the research material that he was using for uh, doing his project and his uh, research. And that is quite uh, interesting because uh, you can find uh, uh, in this research material uh, um, a lot of very disparate uh, things. You can find uh, uh, agriculture report, uh, you can find uh, a report of the Tate uh, uh, on uh, visitors uh, and museums, uh, you can find uh, a report uh, on uh, homeless uh, in New York, uh, and uh, these uh, kind of document, they are also related to some of the projects that are here, so when uh, he was invited to do this project for New York redevelopment uh, of uh, Midtown Manhattan, uh, the research that he did was uh, very often uh, on very disparate subject uh, at this level, also socio-economical, also technical, on uh, the idea of uh, movement and uh, train. Uh, when he was doing some project uh, uh, like uh, West Penn, that you find in the, in the reproduction of the in re representation of the archive not even reproduction that you have here. He was studying a lot of agricultural report, uh, how you fences for cattle or for sheep work. Uh, um, and when he was working uh, on this exhibition CCA, meantime, that he did uh, in the 2000, he was uh, studying uh, carefully a report uh, on the interaction with the object of art uh, of the um, visitors at Tate Library and uh, he cancelled almost everything. The only thing that he kept uh, was uh, five lines in which uh, was written that uh, the typical time, the average time that the visitor spend to look uh, at a painting is uh, five seconds and the average time that uh, the visitor spend to read uh, the label is uh, 20 seconds. So, uh, Serec developed in this exhibition, as you see, about time, an idea for which uh, you don't uh, read the uh, label when you see the object. No, and that's actually, uh, it's wonderful you mentioned this show, the meantime exhibition, because it's extremely connected to what's happening here in the pavilion, because he wanted to sort of 
create a different experience of time in the exhibition. And he was telling me all the time about this obsession for labels, and he actually wanted to have stochastic labels, labels which would be there and then not be there, pop-up labels. Can you talk about this? Yes, he represented uh, in uh, nearby every drawings, there is an uh, object selected by the collection of CCA, which means that some of them uh, were dealing with time, but uh, they were uh, engraves, uh, drawings, uh, architectural drawings, uh, prints. Uh, uh, there was only one metronome as a kind of uh, object uh, that uh, was not, uh, was directly reflecting on idea in mechanical way with the idea of time. Anyway, there was no label, but uh, there was uh, every time an icon nearby the object uh, suggesting the idea of time or the kind of attitude that uh, the visitor could uh, establish with the object. And then there was at the end uh, a total different a small uh, document with all the specification according to the museum standard uh, uh, mechanism. I like a lot, uh, I say, looking at this archive, uh, what is coming out uh, is very, a very radical questioning of all the assumption on which uh, uh, architects are generally uh, operating. And that, I think, is uh, really the most fascinating, uh, um, how can I say, lesson, if you want to, to put in this way, coming from, uh, from this archive. In the books, there are also very nice comments on the books. I don't mention the book, but there are comments uh, like uh, almost a very good book, uh, uh, or I can I say a, a book I really prefer not to read. Uh, um, there are very personal comments and judgment in this kind of um, archive that are quite interesting to explore. Now, Cedric had a very, of course, a specific relationship not only to buildings where he believed they should have a limited lifespan, but also to, to books. When we worked on the, the last book I did with him, Recipe, R-E, CP, so phonetically it becomes recipe. Um, he forced the publisher to put an expiry date on the cover. So almost like with food, the idea was that the book couldn't be sold after, you know, January 2006. Now, he also had a very, very specific relationship to archives, this idea that things, you know, eventually, you know, change and all of that. So how do you see the future of the archive and how do you see this? I mean, it's a very fascinating paradox because on the one hand, the archive is there to be preserved because it's one of the most important archives of one of the most important architects of the 20th century. Yet at the same time, this desire he had for the archive to be, to be dynamic. How, how do you see this product to, to make this tension productive? Well, the archive, you can have two different kind of relationship. One is what you have here, which is a representation and a performance on the idea of the archive. And in fact, uh, you are not uh, dealing with the original, except uh, the model, but uh, with uh, reproduction of the archive. Uh, and uh, in a world in which the distinction between original and copy is uh, uh, less and less uh, uh, relevant, and in which uh, you have um, uh, a digital access to document, uh, um, I don't see the, a problem in uh, the existing of an archive, which is preserved according to the standard because uh, you want to preserve a certain kind of documents and uh, the accessibility to this material. But what I think is very interesting is uh, not to address the idea of the archive in terms of materiality of the archive, but in terms of the content. And uh, since um, when we received the archive CCA, we did immediately an exhibition it was the first things that they did. Uh, I, we opened the boxes and we put uh, the archives uh, in the rooms and it was a kind of research project uh, for uh, eight, nine months in which uh, most of the things were not even known to the curators from CCA or the guest curator. So the public, some of the qualified public coming, was correcting some of the inputs. It was a display which was uh, uh, accepting the changes and the correction and the input. But uh, after that moment, uh, Seri Price Archive has been the most consulted archive uh, at CCA. And Mata Clark uh, Archive uh, is uh, the second uh, uh, by short uh, uh, distance. And uh, I think that is very important. It's very important that uh, there is this kind of interest. And I always ask myself why. 
And I really believe that it's not because uh, of the technical um, or technological uh, character of some of these uh, points or so on, or it's not even because uh, a lot of these projects, not only the Fan Palace, but other projects, have a deep relationship with uh, cybernetics. And uh, it's not even because uh, some projects like the one uh, for the Atom, a new city, he was envisioning a kind of diffuse educational system which was uh, conceptually very near to a net of communication, much more sophisticated than a lot of educational system. It's because I think all these things are very interesting, but the main point for me is that um, is a really question in the role of the architect. The assumption that you have not always to build uh, that uh, uh, you have always to frame the problem in a proper way and in a different way, that you have always to question, but not only the problem, but uh, the role itself of the architects. I feel that uh, in a certain way, in this respect, uh, this uh, is, uh, how can I say, in this uh, uh, Biennale on Fundaments, I think that uh, Cedric uh, Price is uh, fundamental. Uh, uh, is not uh, uh, one of the fundamentals, it's fundamental because of the very strong intellectual conceptual critique of the action itself, of the existing itself of architecture. And I think that starting from basic question every time is really pushing the, the, uh, the limit and us to, to operate in a different way. Mirko, thank you so very, very much, and thanks again for this great collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie. I take this moment to thank you for the brilliant idea, and uh, I hope that uh, the students involved will survive to six months of uh, stressful conversation with all the visitors. Thank thanks you very to all much. of you. Grazie. Grazie. Thank you.